Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Thanks for joining me and hope you all are in good health and good spirits. Today we've got two new things. Well, I guess kind of two and a half things and then two older things. Let's start with the brush, um, which is kindly on loan to me. This is the Declaration Grooming B6 batch and this handle is uh, Gold Member, which is one of the most um, coveted uh, pours, I would say. It's just uh, really um, a beautiful, beautiful handle. And um, I had owned a B6 knot in the past, a different handle, obviously, and it wasn't really my thing. And so fortunately, this has uh, been much more uh, suited to my kind of preferences, and uh, it's been a pleasure to use this brush this week. So thanks again to the person who uh, sent this my way, and also thanks to the person who um, saved this from the uh, inferno. Let's say it was uh, about to be uh, never to be seen again, and somebody saved it. So thanks to that person as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, soak in some warm water just while we continue talking. The other new thing is also by Declaration Grooming, new to me, um, and that's the unscented liniment uh, kind of after shave balm kind of thing. So I'll be talking about this after the shave, of course. The old things, things I'm returning to. Southern Witchcraft's Samhain, uh, one of my favorite all-time soap scents, period, and certainly in the fall season. Um, um, I like how they put the scent notes here right on the label for you. Pumpkin, sandalwood, bourbon, tobacco. There's also oud, um, some other things in there too. And I just absolutely love the way it smells. Um, this is what the soap looks like. I've had this for mm, two years now and I uh, haven't put too much of a dent in it, and I've been uh, pleased with how the scent strength has stayed pretty uh, bold, and um, yeah, just one of my favorite um, soap scents right here. Uh, also, returning to the Gillette New Deluxe. So you know that it's a new because it's got the open comb design, and then you know it's a deluxe, um, I didn't do a good job cleaning this up beforehand, but basically because of the smooth base plate. So other news have some kind of, you know, blade holding mechanism that goes through the bottom or there's a big center bar or something. But on the Deluxes, they're always a smooth base plate. Um, this particular razor is three piece, but not in the usual three piece way. And that the handle, you um, unscrew the bottom and then that's how you take the top off. So this is a cool razor also because this was plated in chromium and it's one of the few razors that Gillette actually did in chromium. It's certainly uh, seen some love over the years and that is just okay with me. The other kind of new thing to me is I'll be using a spoiler today, the Gillette spoiler, um, kind of a renowned, um, renowned, 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 uh, vintage blade. And um, I've been using one all week and it's been quite nice. Um, this is what the blade um, looks like. I never knew that it had the arrows on there, which is very similar to the old Gillette thin uh, blades, the vintage ones that came in like the red and black um, packet. Yeah. So um, this blade has been really nice. And people say that it, um, it has a very long uh, lifespan if you would like it to have a long lifespan. And so um, I'll be definitely using this again next week to see um, if that's true or not. So once you've got the top cap on there, you just have to kind of push down to make sure it sits a little bit. And then you tighten the bottom and then the blade is in there and the alignment has been really, really good um, basically every time. So the Gillette New Deluxe. Okay, so we've got the brush. Uh, it's been soaking for just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get the soap. Let me put some warm water on my face. And let's go ahead, shake out some of this water. I noticed with the Southern Witchcraft's um, vegan base that, um, well, just based on how much I like to load the soap, I noticed that I was going in with kind of too dry of a brush at the beginning of the week, it would just take me a long time to kind of add the water necessary. 
to get to where I wanted it to be. So uh, later in the week, what I started doing was just started with a wetter brush. And um, most soap bases can handle um, a wetter brush. And it just kind of depends on what kind of knot you have, um, how long you want to load your knot, and then, um, you know, also the consistency of the soap can matter, I'd say. So we're gonna load this for just a few more seconds. And it's quite bubbly and wet inside the container here, but I've noticed that um, it'll whip up into a nice lather, no issues. So let's go till about there. And again, it doesn't look like there's much on this brush, but there's actually more than you might think. So put some of this excess and let's just go right into the face lather. So the B6 uh, batch is known for being pretty soft and um, having some gel as well. And that's pretty much how it's been. Um, it's soft, a little bit jelly, not super jelly, but um, definitely you could notice it. And the backbone is kind of right where I like it to be. Not too much, easy to splay the knot. And so, um, yeah, I've definitely had a better um, experience with this B6 compared to the one that I used to own. So that's nice. So if you start with this water brush technique, you might make a little bit more of a mess, but who, who cares, right? I guess some people might, I certainly don't. And so I haven't added any water to the mix kind of at this point, but it's already very close to where I might like it to be. So um, this Southern Witchcraft space is pretty easy to work up, I'd say. Um, I'm just gonna keep uh, face lathering out of the water that I'm bringing in when I'm about to start the first pass. Here we are with our first pass lather result. Just basically added water a couple times and um, it was already dripping down my neck a little bit. So I know some people will appreciate that. Let's go with the first pass with the Gillette New Deluxe with the Gillette Spoiler Blade. So this is definitely one of the more aggressive vintage razors that I own and have tried. Um, generally with Gillette, the older the razor, the more aggressive it is. So those double rings, single rings, those are fairly aggressive. Um, these came out in the 30s, I believe. And so they're not like super old, but they're older than say the super speeds which I think came out in like the 50s. So this is definitely an aggressive razor. And um, it's special to me because somehow, despite the aggression, if I can find the angle, which is about right here in my experience, um, it's a really incredibly smooth shaver. So to some people, they might really enjoy the aggression, but also the relative smoothness. Um, and to be clear, it's not smooth like a tech or, you know, a, I don't know, a mild car or Rockwell plate or something. But um, I think, well, I know for a fact that um, other news that I've tried from the same basic area are not as smooth feeling as this, if that makes sense. I'm trying out this new rinsing technique today. I mentioned how I don't have a loud faucet. I have a loud drain, so then I finally came to mind, well, why don't I just put a bowl in the sink, still use the faucet, but then it doesn't go into the drain. Well, let me know what you think and if it bothers you or if you have any say in the matter. It 
terms of the Gillette spoiler blade, it's a little hard to describe. Um, the only other um, vintage blade I spent a lot of time with was the Persona Tungsten 74 blade. And so the only real comparison I might be able to make is that this one, the spoiler is not as sharp feeling as the Persona. So take that as you will. Okay, first pass done, let's rinse and come back for pass number two in just a moment. So I grab some extra lather hanging on the brush just to apply it to the face. And then now let's go back in for pass number two. Here's a second pass across the grain mostly with the deluxe. To give a little more history about these razors, um, they were pretty expensive back in the day. Um, if you got a set that was um, like a kind of traveler one where it had a brush and soap stick and stuff like that, I believe that retailed back in the day for something like close to $10, which is over $100 today. And honestly, I think they may have had some trouble um, selling these razors um, after a certain point due to the war um, that was coming. And so these are kind of difficult to find. They certainly made or sold far fewer of these than, you know, the new long combs. And um, yeah, these are a little bit more expensive as a result. But there is something that feels like there's more quality in these news compared to the, you know, in these deluxes compared to the other kinds of news. Partially just it, it has to do with the case. If you have any of those cases, um, they're really solid. Um, solidly built. Uh, it's pretty common that even in these little um, three-piece razors that there will be a crack in the handle. You can just put some epoxy in there and it'll take care of it. So, so don't be afraid if you see one out there and it's got a crack. This particular one was made in Canada which is kind of cool because you don't, the Canadian ones are um, pretty rare to see. Especially here in the US, of course. Um, but as far as I know, there's really nothing different between this razor and the American counterpart that was made at the same time. Oh, I forgot which pass I was doing. Okay, second pass complete, rinse, and then we'll come back for the final third pass. Here's the final third pass with the Dark Vision Grooming Gold Member B6. Such a pretty brush. Here's the final third pass against the grain with the Deluxe. Talk about the soap a little bit. Um, I don't know if they've changed their vegan base um, at all since this was released in um, 
October-ish 2019. Very well could be the same base. And um, it's definitely one of the best vegan artisan soaps on the market. And um, definitely is no slouch. So if you haven't tried the base yet, uh, look it up. The scent is fairly complex, as I mentioned, um, and you kind of get little glimpses of different, uh, different aspects of the scent kind of throughout, even in the soap form. Um, there's not too much pumpkin. Uh, people, I think, worry about that because they don't want to spell like the popular full time drink from a famous coffee chain here, but it doesn't smell too much like that. It's just kind of nicely mixed in. And my pro tip for acquiring Southern Witchcraft scents is that the fragrances, which are usually EDP concentration, are really great value. And that you get to really experience the scent for not that much cost. And so if you're willing to use some other kind of potion product, but you really want to experience the scent, I would definitely recommend getting the EDP. Of course, I do have the EDP for this, but um, I never really saw the need to get the um, aftershave splash, so for whatever that's worth. And um, some people bad time to start talking. Some people like to say that a razor should be really judged on how it does against the grain, that most razors are pretty good with the grain. Um, and um, I'll just say that this razor definitely holds up when you go against the grain like this. And I don't feel like But comfort uh, drops very much at all. And again, because this razor is on the aggressive side, I find that it is fairly efficient. And so I'm just feeling around now for any excess spots. I always have these ones in the corner of my jaw, no matter what the razor is. I think it's just tough because it's so I don't know, just the curvature and the kind of the angle is strange there. And while talking to you and not really focusing too much on this, that was a close three pass shave, comfortable, and I'm very pleased with that. So I'm going to rinse and come back and talk to you over post shave about the decoration grooming liniment. So stay tuned for that. Right, so just then I did my usual cold water rinse, and then now we're back, let's talk about some liniment. So, Scott used to make this before I got into the hobby, then he discontinued it when I initially joined the hobby, and then now he's been back at it for, I don't know, it's been, it's been a long time, honestly, and I'm a little bit ashamed that I haven't tried this um, sooner. And so it's a witch hazel based kind of uh, balm liniment, I'm not quite sure what the difference is technically between liniment and balm, but it's got bison tallow, and um, it's sort of like a mix between a splash and a soap, if you can kind of imagine that in terms of the ingredients. And it comes with this nice um, pump mechanism. There we go, I couldn't think of the word. And so with this, I find you don't really need too much. So I'm just gonna do one, like that much is going to be plenty. This is the kind of texture it is. I'm gonna apply a little bit more water to my face while I'm thinking about it, because um, this stuff, 
uh, again, is quite viscous, let's say. So I'm gonna rub it together a little bit and then here we go. If you think you have, well, if you think you'll have a problem with smelling a little bit of uh, animal funk up top, then I might suggest that you get um, one of his many scented liniment offerings. But in my experience this week, you only smell that kind of at the very initial application, it goes away quickly. And if you have a little bit of kind of white streaking, that will be quickly absorbed. Um, this is a pretty heavy um, aftershave product, I'd say. It is, I don't know, it just feels more protective than the usual um, balms I use. And I'd say it's closer to like the old Chateau Books um, salve, which is like a really, really heavy uh, post-shave product. So if you haven't checked out Liniment yet, I would recommend it, especially with a colder, potentially drier uh, season uh, coming in. So let's do a final recap. We use the unscented Liniment. We used the Decoration Grooming Gold Member B6, just a beautiful brush. And I uh, feel very, very privileged to have used this this week. We use the Gillette New Deluxe, made in Canada. Uh, if you think you like a more aggressive vintage shave, definitely recommend picking one of these up. You can get one like this, or they also did sell um, versions where the handle comes totally off, whereas that one doesn't. And then we use one of my favorite soap scents, Southern Witchcraft Salwin. Um, as I mentioned last week or the week before, I'm really trying to use my favorite kind of cold weather scents this season. I felt like last year, maybe I got a little distracted with trying new stuff that I didn't get back to my favorites. And a lot of my favorites do fit into the colder month season. Great, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, no idea what's happening next week, but we'll find out when we get there, right? So thank you all so much for watching. This has been HG Shaves. Uh, take care and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye.